Hi, my name is Alicia Halberter and I'm an Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent with the University of Florida. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about developing and marketing your brand. So the first thing I always like to tell people when they're um, thinking about developing a business or some type of um, branding scheme is that if you don't have time to do it right, you must have time to do it over. Some of you may be here because um, you're thinking about starting in the cattle selling business, some aspect, whether you're selling live animals or whether you're um, looking to sell um, beef products. And some of you may already be doing that and just looking for advice. But I always tell people that you need to do the research and everything beforehand. And that way um, you're not stumbling along the way and you start off with a lot more progress in the beginning than um, you know, trying to figure it out as you go along and, you know, potentially making um, some serious mistakes. So some things that we want to look at first are some branding regulations. Now, these can be um, extremely serious or really lenient, depending on what side of um, the selling you are trying to do. But number one things you want to look at are trademarks and copyrights for any potential slogans or brand names that you are looking at um, revolving around your business around. So we don't want to infringe on any trademarks or copyrights that are currently in place. Um, you don't want to use slogans from any other company. Um, you don't want to uh, copy any names or logos or um, branding guidelines that other companies are using. That is just pretty much asking to get sued and potentially um, having issues, serious fines um, implied on you, you know, from the get go. So make sure you're not infringing on any trademarks or copyrights from other businesses. If you are starting your own company and you have um, a, a brand, a logo, some slogans you're um, looking to have instituted with your company, then, you know, consider trademarking or copywriting those to protect yourself. Um, and so people can't infringe on your trademarks and copyrights and utilize the things that you're using to develop and market your business. Pay attention to the federal and state regulations on your product. So this is especially important if you're selling um, consumable products, even raw beef or um, you know, beef products like cooked food, jerkies, things like that. Um, every state has different regulations on what you can and cannot do. Um, the federal regulations obviously are applicable across the nation, um, but your state and local regulations are gonna be really what you need to research. Um, this includes the inspection process. So like here in the state of Florida, to be able to sell any, um, what we would consider local meat, or to sell um, any of my um, cattle products, if I wanted to have them um, harvested and then sell that beef, that has to be done at a USDA approved slaughterhouse. Um, and that meat has to be inspected by a USDA inspector. Your state may have um, some different regulations regarding that, but make sure that you're following those guidelines. Um, the packaging could have certain guidelines on what needs to be said on there. Um, claims or anything that are on there have to be inspected sometimes by the FDA, depending on um, what kind of labeling you're putting on there. Make sure that your labels are following USDA guidelines as far as um, what kind of claims you're making. Never make any type of health claims, um, especially, you know, don't say this meat is going to help your cholesterol or anything like that. Um, on your actual packaging and labeling because all of that has to be approved by the FDA. And if it's not, then um, again, you could see some serious fines and stuff related to that. And then look at the regulations regarding your platform of where you're intending on selling this product. So um, most of us are on social media now. We know that there's a ton of opportunity for sales on social media, but especially... Um, on Facebook and other uh, sites like that, you might have some regulations on what you can and cannot do. Facebook has um, banned the sale of live animals on their platform. So um, we don't want to be doing anything like that that's going to give our business a bad name or potentially have our social medias banned, anything like that. Some other advertising um, platforms online also have some regulations you need to be aware of. So um, just look at you know, where you're intending selling that product and what kind of regulations um, might be instituted because of that. And 
then also how that might impact your business, um, whether it's worth you know investing in in that platform or not. Um, markets like farmers markets and in-person sales, convenience stores, things like that that you might be marketing your product to will also have um, their own specific regulations or might be regulated by the state. So uh, make sure you're paying attention to those regulations and abiding by all those rules. I always tell people that it's all about the brand. So, um, you know, us as cattle people typically think of, um, you know, our, our brand on our cattle, that invokes a, a response or a feeling. Everybody knows what your brand is. They know what your family represents, how that brand is associated, you know, in the industry. So it's not just your particular logo. It's not just that brand that you're sticking on the cow. It's an experience invoked to each individual who's going to come across your business, whether they're going to end up purchasing a product or not. So we want to make sure that experience is a great experience. We want them to tell their friends about it. We want them to come back. We want them to be um, invested in purchase products and continue to come back and, and purchase products from us. So we need to develop a brand that evokes that, that great response in them um, and you know, has those marketing guidelines in there that is going to keep them coming back and inviting their friends as well to purchase more products. Advertising and marketing are not the same. So pretty much anybody can advertise their product, but not everybody can market their product effectively. So advertising is simply just saying, here's what I have, buy it if you want. Um, whereas marketing is, here's my product, here's why it's great, here's why you should buy it, you know, here's all of the great aspects of it. Um, it really is more of an effective plan to get people to purchase your product rather than just saying, here's what I have, please purchase it. So a bad advertisement in general is just going to give really basic information. It's going to leave your potential buyer with a lot of questions and it's going to provide no visuals, nothing for them to see your product, to, you know, make any type of connection to your product. Our society now is very visual. All of our advertisements need to include some type of visual aspect. Often bad advertisements result in a lot of wasted time for the seller. Um, you know, us livestock people, we consider these tire kickers, people that are going to ask you a lot of questions about your product and then never end up purchasing um, that product, whether it again be a live animal or um, some type of a byproduct of the industry. So we want to avoid bad advertisements. What are we going to look for in a good advertisement? A good advertisement is going to promote your product in a way that easily conveys information to a potential buyer provides all the necessary details, includes a variety of visuals, and these type of advertisements generally have genuine customer contacts. So I can look at this advertisement um, displayed here. I see tons of different pictures that I can look at for the product. The product has a lengthy description that tells me everything I need to know, how much it is, where I can purchase it, um, you know, some highlights about it, what it's going to do for me, some ways to utilize that product maybe. Um, there's tons of different ways that you can make a good advertisement, but make sure that we're focusing um, on one, providing a lot of visuals and including all the necessary details. This will also save you a lot of time in the end because people won't be contacting you for those very basic questions um, and wasting your time having to answer those. So spend that time um, investing in writing a good advertisement for your product um, in order to market it effectively rather than on the back end where you're just trying to answer questions constantly for people who aren't really interested in purchasing that product. So how do I market my product then? We want to first create a strategic business plan. Um, we want to be consistent in our branding and messaging and we want to make sure that we're developing a presence online. So creating a strategic business plan is going to be different for everybody, depending on what type of industry you're getting in, of how involved you want to be. That's probably the first thing that I tell people in their business plan is determine how much you really want to invest in this. Not only, um, you know, initial startup funds, but time as well. Do you have, you know, are you working full time on the farm as well? Do you have a, another full time job? Um, do you have a family? Do you have animals or, or any other type of thing that's going to require your attention. Um, how much attention and time are you really going to be able to devote to this business and make sure you're fitting that into your strategic business plan. 
we often can um, really kind of over um, stretch ourselves and say that, you know, this business has a lot of opportunity. I want to just grow it, grow it, grow it. Or we start out really big um, and, you know, kind of um, make ourselves not be able to sustain that because we started out too large. So make sure we're creating a business plan that incorporates some growth, but starts out on a smaller scale, reduces your risk, reduces your investment, and really determines if that's something that you want to be doing before you're um, really going all in. Developing that uh, marketing you know, strategy and as part of your business plan is going to be really important because that's going to encourage you to be consistent in your branding and messaging. So you should already have a logo developed. You should have some type of color scheme um, developed for your uh, business that's kind of related to your logo. You should um, have some type of slogan or messaging that you're going to stick to. And then this way you're giving potential buyers um, a simultaneous experience across your brand, no matter whether they're visiting you in person, whether they're visiting you online, whether they're hearing about you from a friend um, or seeing your product on shelf, something like that. You want to make sure that when they see that logo, they know who you are and what you stand for, what your business is, is about. Um, you know, we can see this in commercial uh, branding and marketing every day. When you see the golden arches, you automatically know that that's McDonald's, you know McDonald's slogans, you know everything that's associated with that business. So as even though our businesses may be on a much smaller scale, we need to follow those same guidelines. And then we want to develop a presence online. So um, our society is 100% focused on um, online interactions with businesses now. Um, they really like that they can either purchase products online, never leave their house. They like that they can engage with businesses online, especially through social media um, or a website. They want to be able to develop all their information without um, talking to a person generally. Um, and then once they decide that they want to interact with that business or purchase a product, then they want access to a person. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about developing that online presence. So the benefits of developing a presence online, um, I generally talk about three things, personal connection, consistent engagement, and word of mouth multiplied. So with personal connection, again, like we talked about previously, is people really want to engage with um, the owners or um, employees of a business. They want to have some type of personal connection, particularly in um, animal involved um, businesses. And when, especially when we're talking about um, clients that are more on a local focus or um, some type of sustainability, something like that, however you're marketing your product, especially if you're marketing local meat, they want to have that personal connection. So these customers love to see um, personal stories about your farm. They love to see um, photos and they want to be able to interact and, and be able to experience it and feel like they're actually there and a part of that operation. So, um, you know, why not develop that connection through a service that they use every day, something um, online or social media oriented. We all have our phones in our hand, you know, consistently all day, every day. You're giving them a, the ability to be able to see your business in their face all the time. Um, and that's going to give you some consistent engagement. So the more that they see you, the more that they're willing to buy from you. Online presence attracts those repeat buyers because they purchase that product from you and then they go and like your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever other social media you might be using, or they go and favorite your website, um, something that's going to give you the opportunity to be in their face all of the time. I mean, they're going to be able to easily keep track of any updates, new products you might have, um, anything available for them that they might want to purchase again. And... Lastly, um, word of mouth is multiplied. So um, in the realm of social media, sharing is caring. Everybody is going to share that cute picture of the new calf you just posted. Um, you know, if you're having something about a new product or you make a post about, you know, giving customers opportunity to review a product or sample a product, something like that, people are going to share, they're going to engage, and then other people, their friends, their followers are going to see those posts, they're going to potentially engage with um, 
your online presence, your social medias, and then, you know, essentially your customers are advertising for you for free. So why not um, go ahead and, and give them that opportunity to do that for you? So some potential platforms that we can use to um, develop an online presence. Of course, Facebook is probably the number one opportunity. It gives you a ton of options. That's the number one we'll talk about today. Um, it's easy to create a business page that's associated um, with your personal account. And so you don't have to remember other logins. You don't have to um, engage or, or, or meet new followers, things like that. And you can utilize images, videos, text, posts from other pages. It's, you don't have to create all of that content yourself. Um, Instagram is a great option as well. It's a great supplementary account, I think, for businesses, especially if you um, are going to use a heavy dose of photos in your marketing. However, um, it is a bit harder to utilize for um, text or providing links or an option for them to um, you know, visit your website directly, things like that. Um, it's more of a fast paced kind of social media. So people are really just looking at your picture, liking it and then moving on. They're not necessarily spending a ton of time on your page um, engaging with it. So um, it's an option, especially depending on what demographics you're looking at selling towards. Um, Instagram is more for uh, you know, our middle and younger generations. Facebook really reaches a, um, a bunch. A lot of people ask me about Twitter, and um, I generally tell people that Twitter is probably not a great business platform. It's really engaged with um, a lot of heavy text. Users expect a lot of content. They want you to be posting all day, every day. There's not a whole lot of use of photos and videos and things like that on Twitter, and um, just gives you limited opportunity to engage with people. So. Um, if you are going to have a Twitter, it might just be an opportunity for you to shuttle people to your other um, online presence, whether that be your website, Instagram, Facebook, other things like that. So um, if we are going to develop a Facebook business page, what are some tips to um, making it more presentable to consumers? The first thing is that it has to be pretty. So users love a great design interface. Um, they want to see good quality pictures. They want to see you know, logos and color schemes. They want to see, um, you know, it has to be appealing to the eye. So make sure when you're utilizing all of these things that you're making it, you know, as updated and modern as you can. Make it personable. So we want to connect with users by um, showing them our animals, telling personal stories or thoughts. We want to make sure that um, people know that, you know, this is a real human behind this business. We're, we're connected to you. We're engaged with you. We want to support you and we want you to be involved um, in our operation. So, you know, here's how we can make you involved and give you that connection to the business. So, um, you know, highlight your owners. If you have kids, people love to see um, kids, you know, around the farm, around the ranch, things like that. Make sure that you're um, comfortable with whatever you're posting and putting out there, you know, in the, in the public space and, and being able to moderate any potential response to that. The biggest thing is once you do post, you need to engage with those posts. So not only should you be um, encouraging your followers to engage in that post by commenting on it or liking it or sharing it, um, you also need to engage when they comment. So you need to go and respond to their comments um, you need to, you know, promote them to share that page or, you know, any type of, of friendly interaction with them, they're going to, um, they're going to be really positively receptive of that. So they want to, they're not commenting just to comment, they want some type of engagement, make sure you're providing that for them. And then for your posts, we want to make sure we're posting consistently. So at least once a day or a couple times a week, you know, around the same times kind of thing um, and posting a variety of different content. So we're not posting the same thing all the time. We're not just simply um, promoting our products and saying, you know, here's this new product we have this week, you know, come buy it kind of thing. We want them to have some type of other connection to our business um, that promotes promotes our business, but at the same time, isn't always just forcing them to spend money. 
So the great things about the Facebook business page are you are provided um, what they call insights, which are basically analytics of your page. You get um, weekly updates on how much engagement you're getting, how many people are viewing that website, um, how many shares you're getting on posts. They'll even give you tips and suggestions on how to improve. Um, and really this is just important if you're gonna utilize that information. So for example, um, I utilize that information to determine my effectiveness. Did I have a post that did really well this week? Maybe I need to post more content like that. Um, did I have a post that really didn't do very well? Or maybe people are really engaged with my uh, personal stories, but they're not really engaging with my product advertisements. How can I adjust my product advertisements to engage personal stories? So they'll, you know, that engagement will kind of reach more and potentially lead to more sales. Um, using those analytics is really important. It's not just there for us to just say, you know, oh, look, a thousand people looked at my posts that make you feel good about yourself. Um, we really need to be utilizing that to develop our marketing plan um, to be more effective and, of course, to sell more products. I also like the Facebook business page versus like a group or just a personal page because it gives you the option to schedule posts. So this is really important to me. Um, we know that time is our number one um, resource that we're losing constantly. We can never have enough of it. So um, being able to schedule posts allows me to mass produce um, posts at a time. And then um, a time when I, that I have available, you know, Sunday afternoons when I've got something in the oven and I'm just, you know, ready to uh, not do anything else. I can sit on the computer, I can produce a lot of posts and I can schedule them ahead of time so that way when I know I'm going to be really busy, but I know my customers are sitting on Facebook, that they'll have the opportunity to see the posts that I've already scheduled ahead of time. And I don't have to remember to go back and post every day at 8 a.m. or 5 p.m. or um, whenever your audience is available. So this allows me to do that and not forget about it and really have, a, again, a strategic plan involved rather than just randomly posting. There's some other online marketing tools that I found really helpful. If you're going to manage multiple social media accounts, whether that be across different platforms or even on the same platform. So say you have different um, aspects of your operation. Maybe you sell live cattle and you also sell beef products, but you don't necessarily want to sell those on the same Facebook page. So if you have two separate Facebook pages for those aspects of your operation, you can use Hootsuite to um, cross post to manage your content on those uh, multiple social media accounts. It allows you to blast post to both of them at the same time. Um, and that just kind of helps um, manage your time a little more effectively and your efforts. But um, it's really only important if you're mul managing multiple social media accounts, especially helpful if you're managing those social media accounts across multiple platforms. Um, and there are free and paid versions of Hootsuite. Canva is, um, you know, something that I recommend to anyone who is doing any type of developing or marketing on social media because it helps us create high quality visual posts um, that are already um, optimized for social media in regards to size or um, file type, things like that. Um, I created this presentation on Canva. It's just really um, a, a website that allows us to create professional looking content that is you know, design friendly and really important in our visual world. So I highly um, encourage people to look at Canva, especially if you're not really design oriented, but you want to start a social media account and you want it to be really high quality. There's a lot of free content on Canva. There's also some paid versions that you can utilize. And if you're utilizing it for your business, again, you know, it would be a write off. So it might be a potential investment for you. There are a lot of royalty-free, high-quality photos out there that we can utilize. We don't ever just want to be Googling photos and using those in our social media accounts because, again, that's going to um, step into that realm of copyright infringement or trademark infringement, and we don't want to be doing anything like that. So we either need to be using our own photos or making sure we're using photos that are royalty-free. Our photos need to be relatively high quality to have a positive um, receptiveness to people. They don't want to be seeing blurry, you know, out of focus or really dark images, things that's not going to catch the eye. So 
if you're not comfortable taking photos necessarily yet, even with just your cell phone, um, you know, look at utilizing those high quality photos in a royalty free setting like Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, um, all of these websites you can search. They have tons of agricultural centered um, photos on there that you can utilize in your social media or um, website or, or anything that you're using in your branding and marketing plan. WordPress is a good option too if you're looking to design a website or um, a blog potentially depending on you know what kind of avenue you're looking for in regards to marketing your product. Um, there are some free and paid options but I like to just kind of throw that out there because blogs are kind of a hot topic um, now as well or if you're just looking at developing a standalone website as well or selling your product online um, WordPress is potentially an option for you. So what about in-person marketing? A lot of times when we're utilizing these um, online platforms, we may not actually be selling our product. We're just marketing our product online. And then we're utilizing um, in-person avenues to actually uh, sell our product and for consumers to be able to purchase that. So in-person and marketing is a little bit different, um, but has a lot of the same concepts. The number one thing is thinking of who's going to be the face of your operation. So this person needs to have good people skills. They need to be able to dress for the occasion. So, um, you know, not showing up in your dirtiest pants and uh, your greasiest shirt and, you know, expecting customers to, to receive that positively. They need to be knowledgeable about the product, about your operation, um, about any potential questions that consumers may have and they need to be prepared. So they need to have um, you know, nutritional facts of your product or flyers for an event you're having or um, different aspects of your operation that they need to be aware of, dates of markets you might be at in the future, things like that. Um, anything that a consumer might ask that base of your operation needs to be able to answer. So make sure you're paying attention to that and who you uh, designate that role to. And then always think about how your products are gonna be displayed. So again, the prettier it looks, the more people will be attracted to your display. Make sure that we're labeling everything, especially if um, your products are going to be sold somewhere that you're not going to be currently standing there, being able to engage with consumers, or if they're going in some type of um, store or storefront, make sure that um, everything is labeled so there's no questions. And um, again, that face of your operation at that point would be whoever is going to be their employee wise of that business. And they need to be knowledgeable um, about your product and be able to answer those questions for consumers. You don't want a consumer to not purchase your product because of a simple basic question um, that they had unanswered. So make sure everything's pretty, make sure it's labeled really well um, with every, all the necessary information that they might have on there and make sure whoever is going to be the face of your operation um, has those skills initiated and are, are ready to engage with consumers and get them to purchase your product. Some tips for displaying your products, whether you're going to be doing this in like a farmer's market type of setting, whether you're going to be doing this um, in some type of storefront, or even if you're selling um, live animals, there's some tips we can give for um, selling live animals on farm. So the number one thing is cohesiveness, is keep the same feel, um, the same theme, colors, everything throughout your display. You don't want your products to kind of blend in with other products. You want them to stand out and again, evoke that experience of your brand. When I go to McDonald's, I don't want to think of Burger King. I don't, you know, I, I want that same um, branding message to be seen through all of my products. Staying on top of trends. So if there's some buzzwords going around like right now, local is always a huge um, buzzword in the meat industry. And if that's the avenue that you're trying to go as far as developing your brand and, and marketing that, um, and that's part of your messaging, then make sure you're staying on top of those trends and utilizing that in your display and make them eye popping. So your display needs to stand out from competitors. It needs to highlight what makes your product unique and why consumers need to purchase it. So, you know, don't make it 
gaudy in the sense that it's, you know, overwhelming and people can't, um, you know, take in that all the information that you're presenting, just make it appealing towards them to want to come and investigate what your product is and why they should purchase it. In regards to um, live animals, you know, always making sure that our animals are um, presented very well, that they're um, clean, they're in a clean environment, that again, you know, we're staying on top of trends, we're selling, you know, show cattle, maybe having um, some previous, you know, genetics shown there that your consumers can look at to see, you know, what their calf might um, grow up into or, um, you know, be utilized in the show industry for if you're showing, if you're, if you're selling, I'm sorry, um, you know, replacement heifers, maybe giving them a tour into your herd to see what your current cows look like, things like that, um, you know, go a long way with consumers and it makes them want to purchase your product. It gives them something to compare your product to and they like that. Some things to avoid as far as marketing is um, some ineffective marketing strategies. So we don't want to go out there and just try something random just to try it. Um, sometimes that doesn't work for us and can actually backfire and can either lead to us wasting a lot of time or even um, you know, a loss of sales, loss of engagement on our social media. Um, and then we have to spend time recovering from that loss. So make sure you're utilizing a strategy um, for a predetermined amount of time and then reevaluate whether that strategy is working or not. So whether we're using that analytics from our social media, whether we're just looking at whether or not we're actually getting sales, um, you know, make sure we're looking at whether our marketing strategy is being effective. And if it's not being effective, how can we change it to be effective? We want to make sure we're staying up to date on um, you know, strategies that other companies are using, what's kind of hot in the industry right now that maybe we could be utilizing, um, you know, and if it's not working, throw it away, transition to something new. Um, that blunt change is not necessarily bad. And if what we're utilizing is not working. And um, avoid overwhelming yourself. So operating a cattle industry is big enough of a time requirement uh, risk of money, you know, it's um, a lot of energy and just mental exhaustion associated with that. So we want to make sure that whatever we're capable of investing in that business, that we're um, sticking to that and we're not overwhelming ourselves. We're not growing that business to um, an extent that we can't manage or that, you know, we're not at a point where we can hire other people to help us manage that make sure that, you know, the first things is going to be, of course, um, the cattle business that is your business is revolving around and your family and then, um, you know, your business last and make sure that we're not neglecting other things just to potentially grow a business. And is, is it making you money? Is it bringing you happiness? You know, our, analyzing those benefits is going to be really important as well. Avoid sparking controversy. So this is really important, especially on our online presence. We want to try and remove our own personal opinions um, from that presence and reduce the potential business problems or um, eliminating potential consumers because of our own personal opinions. We wanna make as many sales as we personally can. So we wanna avoid controversial topics that are um, potentially in the news, especially if they don't um, revolve around our business at all, um, keep our personal opinions separate, especially, you know, regarding politics or um, things that your consumer base may not have the same opinion as you. Perfectly fine to post those on your personal page. Just keep them off your business page. It'll reduce a lot of headache for you um, and make your messaging and branding a lot easier. If you need help with branding or marketing development um, for your operation, I'd be happy to give you some personal tips. If you, you know, are really confused on Canva or something and you need some, some tips, you know, utilizing Facebook, anything like that. Um, I do all of that professionally and personally um, in my business. And I can give you, you know, tons of tips to help you um, 
utilizing that. You're free to reach me. This is my um, office number here and my email that, you know, you, you can reach me at any time. Be aware I am in Eastern time. So um, if you're in a different time zone, um, calling me at a certain time would be um, optimal for you. But um, I'm always available to help and support you in any way that you need.